Hey everyone, my name is Joe Scar, and today we're going to take a look at something called torque force in thinking particles. This discussion came about during a discussion with a good friend and coworker of mine about how there is not really a uh, torque force natively inside thinking particles. Um, we had a little bit of an interesting, colorful discussion, and I came to realize that there's a bigger topic at hand here which is why programming skills are an extra advantage. You see, if you get in a pinch and you have to get something done, you can either rely on the developer who has their own set of priorities and schedule, or if you invest in your own programming skills, you're going to be able to do a lot of this yourself. And we're going to show you how. Okay, so here we are inside uh, max and this is kind of our basic TP setup. We've got a couple other options disabled right now Let's go ahead and take a look at our birth. We just birth a particle at a certain position give it a nice shape uh, this rigid body is used later and Here inside torque simple. We've got something where we take our particles We get their Y direction from their alignment and then we're going to use something called quat compose and Quat compose you can see has a, a rotation axis, which is a vector and then a rotation amount, and that's in degrees per second, and that's a scalar value. Um, and what this does is it will output either an alignment or a spin. Now, what we do is we take the particle's current spin, and then we take this new spin from Quat Compose, and we feed this into something called Spin Math. Spin Math has some functions either can add spin or subtract spin from a particle, and then we use the result of that and set the particle spin. Now, Quat Compose and Spin Math are both script operators in TP um, that I developed quite a while ago, and we're about to release them publicly. And what I wanted to do is show you how easy it is to create something like this. And with a little bit of you know research inside the Max help file. Uh, once you understand that spin is actually a quaternion, or also an angle axis, um, you can start to see that we can do things, let's go into the quats, you can do all kinds of operations, um, such as adding quats together, subtracting, um, all sorts of functions. And, you know, really my big point that I want to impress upon you here is that once you invest a little bit of time starting to script and program your own things, your capabilities and your, your value as an artist or developer uh, goes up dramatically because you can then find solutions to problems that otherwise you would have to rely on somebody else. Um, and I think we all know that being able to overcome a a challenge uh, using our own resources is much nicer than having to rely on somebody else in their schedule and set of priorities. So something else we're going to release is something called Script Manager. Script Manager is a simple tool, a uh, little bit buggy, for managing a whole bunch of scripts. And you can store favorite directories. And what we're going to do is go inside and we've got a bunch of our favorites here. We're going to look inside of our script ops. And inside our scripts ops, we've got a series of different condition or you know, categories. You can see that these are stored under a my max startup directory. And so these are all script TP script operators that get loaded uh, when max loads. Now the first one that we want to take a look at is going to be quat compose. Quat compose, we'll see here, we come under helpers, math. Uh, you can see we have quite a few and not all of these are ready for release yet, uh, but we're going to be doing this over time. So we've got quat compose, um, it's going to take those parameters. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's under helpers math. Double click to get in here. Quat compose. And what we're going to do in this uh, script manager is we're just going to right click on this. And this is going to open it up in the editor for us. Now, the format and the um, structure of TP script operators is pretty standard. Uh, we've covered this in the TP4 for production 1.0. And once you learn how to do this, you know, you can start to crank out quite a few. And you can actually then control what inputs does your operator have? What outputs does your operator have? 
Now, granted, some of these things do get fairly complicated when you're dealing with things like iterators, but in this simple example where we want to say, hey, give me a point three and give me a float and make an alignment or a spin out of it, I'm going to show you just how easy this is. So here's the TP calculate function. This is the primary area where the programming occurs. And what we do is we say, hey, if TP out ID is greater than or equal to zero, and all this means is, hey, does is something calling a result from this script operator? Well, what we do is we say, hey, we're going to assign a variable called my axis, and we're going to assign that to whatever is coming into the zero input, which is now inputs and outputs in TP script operators start with zero and then count up. So you can see I add these numbers in here just to kind of remind myself what is what. So if the input coming in is number zero, that's going to be our rotation axis. So nice simple name. And then we have my amount and that's going to be input number one, which is this guy. And so here we've got, you know, just a descriptive name for it, but really all it is, it's a float value, a scalar, a simple, you know, floating float value. So what we do is we take these two uh, values and then we say, hey, okay, so TP says, based on the out ID, whether it's the alignment or the spin, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate um, this result. And so if the out ID is zero, meaning the alignment, all we do is we're going to say, hey, angle axis, my amount, my axis. And what this means, when you go in and look inside angle axis, um, yeah. you look this up and you can look at the constructor for it. And this is this basically says, hey, when I declare this in Mac scripts, I type in angle axis, I give it a degrees and floats, and an axis, which is a point three. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to return an angle axis for us. You can read the description here. It's an orientation in 3D space using degrees and rotation axis. And um, this one only represents pi, negative pi. Uh, well, a normalized quad only does pi, negative pi to pi. Angle axis can actually be greater than 360. So it's very useful for defining high spin speeds. All right. So if we want an alignment, it's going to look like this. If we want a actual spin value for our number one output being there, that's going to be a little bit different because this 4800 um, is the number of ticks in uh, ticks per second in 3ds Max. And so in order to get an ang accurate spin value, we have to divide the amount of spin by 4800 uh, in order to get that. Okay, so this is all really simple. We, you know, the rest of this format in here, um, you know, you assign categories, create a class ID for it. This just identifies this as a unique um, item or a plugin inside 3ds Max. And you can see we give it a name, etc. And, you know, you get to choose the color. There's the colors down here, as well as which class is it going to be in. We're going to put it, this into the helper class. Okay, and then of course, you know, we want this to appear in our category called M3D Math, which is why when we click inside here, categories M3D Math is right there. And uh, yeah, it's it's fairly simple. Um, once you exercise and create some simple operators like this, um, the door really opens up for you to be able to create a lot. I won't say anything because there are limitations based on the SDKs and the APIs of both Max and TP, but um, it will allow you to do things that are not currently in 3ds Max, or I'm sorry, not currently in Thinking Particles. Okay, so that's Quat Compose. And now the other one that we want to look at, I believe, is under, I think it's under operators. Yes, we have some spin, some spin functions. And this one's called spin math. We'll right click to open that up. And same kind of thing. We define the category, the name of it, um, class ID is a unique number. You can just use this simple function here to generate that. And what we're going to do is... Uh, well, I will also say this. Inside a script operator, anytime you make a choice on something, let's take a look at this. So spin math has this little rollout. 
and it has a choice that you make. You know, it's a parameter you're going to set. Now that parameter needs to be remembered between sessions. So next time I click on this, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to switch or move. We could set it to subtract and move out here, look at something else, come back, it's still subtract. We, of course, in this case, want it to be add. But the way that thinking particle script operators remember what parameter you've set is based on this thing here called parameters. And parameters, um, we declare a set of parameters and say, hey, this is going to be connected to the rollout named params. Well, here's our rollout for params. Give it a name. And inside this, we have uh, radio, bu radio buttons. We'll just give them a name and what their options are. And you can see that what happens here is this parameter section, this is where uh, the script operator can remember things. Um, what we do is we define a parameter called function or func. Uh, what type is it? It's just an integer number, meaning which choice, which radio button choice we're going to make. And here's the important part. We say, hey, UI is going to be connected to func RDO. And there's func RDO right there. Okay, so this one's very similar. We've got you know color, inputs, outputs. Um, the inputs and outputs are pretty simple. We just have some inputs. Uh, this one's a little bit special because we have an on input, so we can we can control exactly when this turns on or not. And then we also have two other inputs. We've got spin number one and spin number two. Now the on value has this flag called TP port flag none. And that means it's not really required. It's not going to show the user that something is required. OK, and then the other one here, spin 1 and spin 2, both have the port flag set to needed, which means that when we, oops, let's get TP up here. When we do create this operator, you can see it shows up with the highlighted little yellow saying, hey, you got to put something in here for this to operate properly. Let's get rid of that one. Okay. And so then what it does, the only output that there is, is a TP port type of spin. Now, these port types basically say what kind of data is going to be coming in. I'm going to interpret this as a spin value. Um, and then in this case, we're going to output a spin value. And again, remember, your, your inputs and outputs start with 0 and count up. OK, so this might look a little complicated down in TP Calculate, but it's actually pretty easy. All we do is we say, hey, if something, if the TP out ID, which refers to which output ID we're after, if the out ID is greater than or equal to 0, meaning something is calling this data, and if nothing is calling this data, this operator doesn't really evaluate, except for something called a global call, which is negative 1, uh, which will you can look that up in our TP4 for, for, for production 1.0 script operators tutorials. But here what we do is we say, hey, if something is asking for this output, we're going to start off and we say, hey, give us a, assign a new variable. We'll call it do it equals true. That's kind of a default. Hey, I want to I want to assume that I want this to happen. And then what we do is we say, hey, if our TP in out input connected zero, which basically means, hey, is the on connected? If it is connected, then we're going to assign a variable to, and we're going to get that incoming variable. And if on value is equal to zero, then do it is equal to false. Okay, so it's just a simple control to say, hey, if if the on value is connected, if it's if it's not set to true, then don't process. But in this case, if do it is is true, what we want to go through and say, hey, if if the input connected number one and input connected number two are both connected, then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and assign some variables, get those input values as quaternions. And we do that as quaternions because um, angle access does not have operators for addition or subtraction. You have to just convert that incoming spin into a quat. And quats are a little bit crazy um, in terms of you know how they're constructed, but once you convert an angle axis into a quat, you're able to do all different types of uh, operators on them.
Now we've got those two incoming spin values, and now we say, hey, if the spin number one is not undefined and spin number two is not undefined, then let's go ahead and process. If they are undefined, it's going to skip and nothing's going to happen, which is what you want. Okay, but if they do have values, we say, hey, case of the function of, meaning if the function, whatever function number is, we're going to choose a different kind of operation. Remember our two functions here under functRDO is add or subtract, which is, I believe, uh, one or, zero, or two. Or I was wrong there. It looks like it's uh, zero and one. So anyway, we define something called result. And result is going to be, in the case of the zero function, which is going to be add, all we do is we just say, hey, spin one plus spin two becomes our result value. We get out of this, uh, and then of course, subtraction. Then we get out of that case function. We've got a result value. And then result value, we're just going to convert back into an angle axis. And then we go ahead and return that result. And so if the out ID is greater than or equal to 0, somebody wanted something out of this spin math, you know, see this, this output is connected. So what all we do is we just say, hey, let's get that result. It's either the plus or the minus, convert it to an angle axis, and then we return that, and this result becomes our output. Now, why does this all matter? Well, because you will find that there will be times when you want to do things in thinking particles that there may not be a function already built in. But this is where CBIS has been so great, and they have opened up this whole script operator capability so that we can construct our own set of uh, script operators and functions. We can make our own operators. It's like giving you the keys to the car or giving you one of the best fishing poles you can have. Okay, so let's see how this works. We birth a shape. We've got the torque simple. Let's we're going to use the direction here to define what rotation axis. Of course, we could use the x-axis of the particle, the z-axis of the particle. And these are, of course, local ac particle axes. If you want a world axis, you know, just throw in any kind of point 0.3 here and feed that into the rotation axis. But in this case, we want it per particle so that you can um, basically define, hey, I want you to always spin around your one of your own axes. Okay. So what this does is we take that y-axis for this particle, and this rotation amount in degrees per second, well, we've got this set to 10. And so what happens is it says, hey, take that y-direction and 10 degrees per second, create a spin value out of that, add it to my current spin, and then we're adding here and then go ahead and apply that to the particle. Well, what happens is, and we'll go ahead and rewind, and we'll just hit play. You can see that, yeah, it starts to spin way up and go faster and faster. Let's make this uh, lower so it's a little more dramatic. Okay, so over time, it's adding and adding and adding and adding, which is exactly what a force does. So in this way, you can create your own torque force simply by doing a little bit of programming and setting your own spin values. Now the great thing about programming like this is it's not just spin. You can do all different kinds of things. You know, you look at some of these categories and some of these operators we have, uh, whether you want one vec alignment, matrix operators, blending between matrices, uh, debugging your own values inside. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on. We've got utilities for doing all kinds of crazy things, uh, just regular M3 operators, noise controllers. It is, uh, you want to get the, the min, mean, or max for a set of particle values. Uh, you can just say, hey, give me the group. Find out whether you want you want to analyze all of the that whole group's um, size, mass, or speed, or the subtree of that group and it will output and tell you what those min, mean, and max values are. Okay, so here, let's go ahead and take a look at something else. What we've got now is we're going to turn on the gravity, we're going to turn on another torque rule, 
And we'll talk about this in a second. And then we've got some physics here where we've got both uh, BT and SC. Now what this does is this torque says, hey, particles either at birth or if my velocity is over two. In either of those cases, I want to go ahead and, yeah, add some torque force to my particles. This comes into particle data spin, and it's going to go ahead and spin our particles. Now, the reason this came up is because my, my friend wanted to, oops, I guess I did something wrong there. My friend wanted to have particles falling down, or falling, and having torque, and then now you can see our particle slows way down. And so that torque, based on this threshold, he's not moving fast anymore. So the spin is not added. So that torque force stops. Now, if you go ahead and disconnect this on, what's going to happen is, of course, our particle is going to go ahead and continue to try to rotate even after it's collided and slowed down a little bit. Here it comes. And boom. And then now that torque force is still being applied. But what happens is the bullet bullet has its own set of parameters. One of those parameters here in the BT rigid body is the sleep threshold for both its velocity and rotation. If the velocity falls below 2 or the rotation falls below 10, um, that particle essentially goes to sleep and is not going to be um, yeah, not going to be affected. So Let's get back into this. We're going to go ahead and reconnect that. You know, sometimes you're going to have to exert a little extra control to get exactly the kind of result you want. But that's the beauty of thinking particles. It has all these options. You can tap into each piece of data. And really, what I want to impress upon you is the ability to program and develop your own tools sets you free from being dependent on a developer or uh, anyone else. If you really want to empower yourself and uh, add to your own value, definitely you know, spend time doing a little bit of programming each day. Spend a half hour. It, and over time, a couple weeks, you're going to find that it gets easier and easier. Um, yeah. One of the one of the nice things we, that we like to do here is we have on TP Mayhem, we've got a section for MaxScript. And so if you want to learn about uh, script operators, you can either look at the Cebus uh, script operator documentation, where it talks all about you know, how to construct, what the different types of input options and port options are, um, the different kinds of things you can do to particles, and detect within them, um, you know, detect, hey, is it dying? Did it enter the group? These are all very kind of common functions that we're used to. But you can then combine them in unique ways to get exactly done what you need done. So just want to say, try and spend a little bit of time. Um, teach yourself some programming. And you know you will be able to accomplish things you can't otherwise do. Kind of like this two-vec alignment script that we wrote. So anyway, keep an eye out. We're going to release this script manager which is a very nice uh, way to be able to edit a bunch of scripts and kind of manage your own favorites. You know, we can go here into script operators into, uh, let's look at this and say, hey, let's grab these and right click on all three and boom, it's going to open all three for us. So nice script operator there, or I'm sorry, script manager. And then keep an eye out. We're going to be releasing more and more of these TP script operators over the next few months. All right, take good care, learn how to program, and uh, keep on making cool stuff.